Another great season by this Bills team, a second consecutive AFC East title, and then a third opportunity against their hated New England Patriots, uh, and they just absolutely took them to the woodshed. What, what was your impression of this team leading up to that game? Uh, there was a ton of confidence I could feel, uh, and, and how did Saturday night play out? Yeah, honestly, you know, throughout all my media stuff last week, I was saying I thought the Bills were were two scores better than the Patriots. Just when you look at the rosters, when you look at how that game played out in Foxborough, when you halfway throw out the game in Orchard Park because of the wind, to me, the teams just weren't that close. You know, you have a, a defense that was down two of their cornerbacks heading into the game. Some other guys dinged up, specifically Dante Hightower um, and Christian Barmore on their defensive line, and the Bills – got everybody back and so when you started looking at these things a rookie quarterback with josh allen with his playoff experience the one x factor was going to be bill belichick could he come up with a game plan to slow down this offense and give his team a chance of winning and that just didn't come to fruition on saturday night uh joining us again eric wood um what's next with eric wood podcast check it out everybody where you get your podcasts um you looked at some of these games from the weekend and you know, I don't, I don't, my expectations aren't as high for the chiefs because of who they played in the, in the Steelers. I do feel like the victory in the, in the, in the way they did it because they executed so well against no matter what you can say about Bill Belichick and what they've done offensively, he always has a game plan defensively. That's going to be uh, stout and get it done. And this Buffalo bills team uh, schemed up by Brian Dable decimated them i feel like this win has catapulted buffalo to a very high position in the afc i don't want to make it too high of expectations but th this team is playing as good as anybody right now it feels like yeah you're exactly right i mean they're sitting i saw this morning it's a point and a half spread on the game so that means on a neutral field they're saying that the bills are a point and a half favorite if you're assuming that arrowhead the traditional three point difference in the point spread and so yeah they're right there with the Chiefs and you know coming into the season I think that's where everyone predicted it would be now Tennessee you know plays more consistent ball this year and they get into the one seed and so now this isn't the AFC championship game this is in the divisional round but by all uh, indications these are the two best teams in the AFC so it'll be a fun matchup and, and you're right I mean the the scheme that Brian Dayball put out there I mean they used uh, different personnel groupings on 50 different plays. They had Isaiah McKenzie had three carries in the game, almost using him in a Debo Samuel type role. Uh, the Bills, you know, backup slot receiver to Cole Beasley. <laughs> you know, they put him in the backfield, and they they were just so multiple offensively. And then it seemed like every time the coverage was there, and New England was in all the right spots, Josh Allen would make a guy's ankles break on the outside, and he reel off another 20 yard run. Josh Allen, uh, you brought him up. He has been um, exceptional, right? There were times this year where some people thought he may have kind of gone back in a different direction with a three-interception game here or something like that or the fact they were losing in games. But what they did offensively this year, the point differential, I mean, it was uh, record-breaking. It was outrageous. Uh, they, are, they are playing as high a level as they can right now. That being the case, does Leslie Frazier have – it in him to find a way to stop this Chiefs team and, and, and make it a game. Yeah, I mean, so when you look at the approaches that they've taken against the Chiefs, and we'll go back to the last three matchups. So started during the 2020 season in the regular season, they played on a Thursday night, I believe. Maybe it was, it was a weekday game. It was like a COVID mess with the game, but I believe it was a Thursday game. And so they played in Buffalo. Buffalo kept their safeties high. And Clyde Edwards Alaire rushes for over 150 yards. And Mahomes doesn't do a whole lot, but the Chiefs get the victory. Then to come playoff time, the Bills brought some pressure, and you know as well as anyone, Ryan. When you bring pressure against Patrick Mahomes, you're literally, it's literally a death sentence. Like you may get him once, and he's going to get you the next nine times when you bring the blitz against him. And, and the Bills got beaten in the AFC Championship game last year, so they evaluated all offseason. You know, the entire team is built to play with the Kansas City Chiefs. And then in week five of this season, they kept their safeties high. They were able to stop the run with the six-man box. And they did a lot of press on the outside, a lot more than they normally do, trying to disrupt the timing of Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey and then understanding that a lot of their answers are the screen game to the outside. 
I believe in their last six games, including the playoffs, they throw screens on 14% of their plays. I mean, that is an extremely high number, but that's how they've been able to combat the two high safety looks that gave them troubles earlier in the season. Well, we'll see without Tredavious White, Buffalo's all-pro corner. We'll see with him being gone for the year without, uh, with a torn ACL if the Bills can still run those concepts and slow this Chiefs offense down like they did in their victory in Arrowhead earlier this year. Yeah, that was the question I was going to ask. You know, we talked about it with uh, Mitchell Schwartz just a little bit ago. I've been talking with the guys here. Uh, this Chiefs team has lost to all three of the teams that are left in the AFC, right? Twice early in the season where they weren't even close. And then a, a uh, beating by Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals late in the year that cost them the number one overall seed. Does that play any effect once the playoffs start? Is it a confidence builder for the other team? Or is it just something that, that happened and now uh, when the playoffs start, you just you throw the records out the window and you, you go to battle? Yeah, I think for a team like Buffalo, it's pretty big because the Chiefs had had their number prior. So I think getting that win early in the season shows them that they can win and they can win at Arrowhead. Now, when you're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs and you're looking at the remaining AFC teams, with the amount of experience that they have in the playoffs, having represented the AFC the last two years in the Super Bowl, they've hosted the last three AFC championship games. I think with the amount of experience they have and the success they've had in the playoffs, it's not as daunting on them. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.